If you'd like to talk about your own Bigfoot encounter, or if you're looking for help from a Bigfoot investigator in your area, email me at BigfootCrossroads at gmail.com. Also, be sure to check out the Facebook page and give it a like at facebook.com forward slash Bigfoot Crossroads. Welcome to the show, Miss Brenda Harris from the Four Corners region of the United States. Uh, I've known her for a while. I've talked with her before in the past. I'm glad to have her on the show and catch up with her. She has lots of amazing and interesting Bigfoot stories. She seems to be the, I don't know what you'd call yourself, the focal point of places people go with their Bigfoot encounters in your area. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you choose that position or did it kind of choose you uh, i think it kind of chose me <laughs> how long have you been doing uh this uh 25 plus years wow long time now did you hear about bigfoot and stuff whenever you were growing up as a little girl i i did um I think we had some, you know, at a very young age, we used to like live in a mobile home and we had something come, you know, to our mobile home and scratch the side of our trailer and always wondered what it was. And, you know, still to this day, you know, uh, or back then I, you know, I was like, what, what was, I mean, it scared me and my sisters and, you know, uh, we, we never didn't, you know, not too sure what it was. Cause we lived about maybe, I would say maybe a good half a mile from the Animus River at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I just don't know what, what it was, you know, at a young age. We didn't know. We just seen uh, heard like a scratch mark underneath the, our bedroom window during the summertime. And we had our window open. And we heard like uh, what sounded like, kind of like some, like a growling sound at the same time. But, uh, you know, we didn't know that that it could be possibly be a Bigfoot. You know, we didn't know that. Um, I thought maybe it would too, you know, maybe somebody was just trying to scare us. I don't know. But when we would, you know, the next day we'd go out and look on underneath our window, we, we'd see long scratch marks, you know, uh, along the um, that uh, side of the wall there outside our mobile home. And, you know, from there, we just kind of, I started kind of like, what, what's coming around? What is this? You know, um, some would say, oh, it's, it's probably skinwalker. Someone just trying to scare you guys or something. Um, you know, like I said, young age, I'm like, okay, well, whatever, you know. But it uh, wasn't until I um, had, oh, my mom and dad, during the summertime, we'd go out to, uh, travel out to Pinon, Arizona. And this is kind of like the start of this Bigfoot thing, you know, for me at a, uh, a very young age. Um, we would go and travel out to Pinon, Arizona, and um, my mom and dad um, would get us kids, you know, up. And about, we'd be leaving the house about three, four o'clock in the morning, and it's like a three hour drive out to my grandma's. Well, on our way, <clears throat> We were in a, a pickup truck and we had a camper in the back. So dad made like a makeshift bed so we could all go to sleep, you know, and they would wake us up when we get there. And so we're on our way um, as we're uh, leaving uh, our home and driving down um, the, uh, like the back roads at that time was towards, you know, uh, I think it was uh, getting close to uh, San Juan Regional Medical Center. It was right in that area there that mom and dad would always listen to the Navajo hour. And the the lady would say, don't, don't be going down to the river. You know, there's, there's a monster at the river. And, uh, you know, of course, mom and dad didn't know that I was still awake. 
They'd be saying this on the radio. Yeah, you know, on the Navajo hour. Wow. And um, the lady was saying, don't be going down to the river. There's a monster down there. And that really caught my attention. <laughs> yeah. So I I asked mom and dad, well, hey, what's that lady talking about? There's a monster at the river. Oh, it's nothing. Just, just go to see. We'll wake you up when we get to grandma's. Uh, they wouldn't tell me. They wouldn't say. You know, that went on several weeks, you know, every just about every weekend during the summertime we'd go to grandma's. And then the next time, you know, same thing. But this time, you know, it was like three times, three, four times that we'd gone. Uh, but there was the one time when she said again, don't go down to the river. There's a, um, a Sasquatch down at the river. And that name stuck with me for a long time. I'm like, what is she talking about? Again, I would ask mom and dad, what, what's a Sasquatch? What, what is she talking about? Again, oh, it's nothing. Just go to see and we'll wake you up when we get to grandma's. It's like, okay. Well, when I got, in, you know, uh, growing up in my teenage years, I that movie, um, The Legend of Boggy Creek came out. So as a teenager, I, I went and watched this movie. And I, I wanted to see, you know, this looks like a pretty good scary movie i was into scary movies at that time <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so i you know i watched it and yeah at the beginning of the movie how they talk and stuff but the guy <clears throat> i believe it was the guy he says the name sasquatch so i'm sitting there in the theater and the guy says the name sasquatch and that rung a bell i'm like hey that's that's that name that that lady said on the navajo hour sasquatch I'm like, what is a Sasquatch? So as the movie goes on, you know, um, then they show this tall, hairy creature. I'm like, is that, that's a Sasquatch? I mean, that's what's roaming around head down here at the river? Wow. I, I was, I was like, wow, that's what she was talking about. Cause she would say, I know I'm starting to put things together, a monster, a yeah, so, um, you know, don't be going down to the river, or Sasquatch down there. And I'm like, oh. Okay, that's what she's talking about. There's this big, tall, hairy creature hanging around at the river. I, you know, and at that time, I was like, wow, that's when I started um, looking more into it. But, I, you know, at that time, too, I didn't, I never let mom and dad know or my brothers and sisters know that I was really interested in, um, in this Bigfoot stuff. That's pretty much the start of all of it. Is it considered kind of uh, one of those subjects that you're supposed to just leave alone? Yes. Uh, among the, the Native people, we're not supposed to be talking about this uh, Bigfoot stuff or any kind of paranormal stuff. You just leave that stuff alone. You, and you just leave this Bigfoot Sasquatch alone. You know, let it do what it needs to do. You, you, you don't bother it. That's what we get told. That's what we were told. Is you just leave it alone. Let it do what it needs to do you know, and go about his business, you know. You mentioned um, the thought of uh, it being a skinwalker whenever it visited you. Mm -hmm. Skinwalkers, uh, in my opinion, have kind of been misidentified or misportrayed would be a better word in the yeah. media lately. And it's become a really popular subject. I mean, people, you know, all sorts of podcasts are doing shows about them. You know, yeah. the popularity of Skinwalker Ranch and the television shows about it and everything. Uh, yeah. What are your personal feelings on that? I, I, I don't um, get mixed up in that because it's witchcraft. And it's, it's really sad to see that the Native people, different tribes, you know, they, they use that among their family members to hurt them or friends, mm -hmm. to hurt your friends. And, and a lot of it is due to jealousy. If a family's doing so good and all of this other family jealous of what they're doing, they'll go make havoc. And they're going to walk over there and make havoc. Um, you know, they cast spells and stuff like that. And I, you know, I don't, I don't mess with that stuff. You right. know, um, I, it's just um, I don't care to get in, in, into the skinwalker stuff because I know what it is. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, you shouldn't say that. But I'm like, well, you know what? It's true. Yeah. You know, you know, I just right up front, you know, people don't like it. That's that's OK. That's all right. But um, a lot of them know, you know, you're right. It's true, though. You know, I get a lot of good feedback from it. You know, you don't mess with that stuff. I've just seen uh, I've even seen people 
put skinwalkers in the cryptid category with Bigfoot as some sort of creature. And it really bothers me because growing up in Oklahoma, I've had a lot of Native American friends and, you know, distant family members and things like that. And it was always like you're saying, it's witchcraft. It's something you don't talk about. It's, it, it's bad medicine Yeah, to see it portrayed like this and kind of used and everything. It really just sort of bothers me because I, I, I think there's actually should be some concern uh, mm -hmm. for, you know, people not knowing what they're messing with and going out and trying to uh, dig for information or go to where they might find one or something like that. If mm -hmm. they just stumble across the wrong place or something, uh, something horrible could happen. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, you just don't know what, you know, what these things can really do. These skinwalkers, you know. Um, yeah, they can shape shift into anything, but you know, there's so much more that goes into that, um, and, and it, it's, it's it's actually it's, it's terrible, you know, just to become one. You got to kill one of your own family members, and, and you know that that's horrible. Yeah, you know, um, it, it really is. And then for people that put the them with the Bigfoot thing is uh. uh I really don't think they should do that. But, you know, it's whatever they want to do, they're going to do it anyway. Which kind of leads us into something I wanted to talk to you about. A lot of uh, encounters that you've heard about and know about that you and I have discussed in the past. Some people love to hear about them and some people try to ignore it. But you hear about a lot of Bigfoot attacks. I have. Yes, I have. And Bigfoot being violent towards humans. Uh, is that still going on? Um, I haven't heard some, you know, like lately around here. But uh, back east, I, I've been getting uh, some um, reports on them. And of course, it's been kept real quiet, and that's all I can say. But, yeah, it, it's been attacking some people. And, um, and and it's too bad uh, what you know some of them have gone through uh, during their attacks. Um, I've had one. I'll go ahead and uh, I'm not mentioning names. I'm not going to mention the state or where I got the message from. Um, but there was a an individual that had uh, his arm ripped off. Um, had another different individual that had his uh, finger ripped off and um, you know I've gotten other reports of where it's uh, really thrown a, an individual around uh, out in the woods and so you know people that say that these things are really friendly uh, no you know you, you just you've got to be very careful when you're out doing you know, any kind of research out in the mountains, you know, that is really the reason why I got into doing this is to get the word out there. Hey, you know, be really careful. You know, I, I get a lot of people, other people, other researchers that, um, oh, she doesn't know what she's talking about and she's making this up and that up. I'm like, no, um, I, you know, you, you've got to be careful. It doesn't matter how trained you can be, how one can be. You could have, like, law enforcement behind you. You could have, I mean, if you're working in that kind of a field, uh, if you're uh, in any kind of military and you have that kind of skill, you, you know, you've still got to be careful because you, we all just don't know what these things can can do. They could turn on you so quick. You know, I, okay, yeah, you guys said this was funny, but why did it attack? Why did it attack? What, what, did you do something that it might, you might have provoked it or something? You know, we, we all have to be very careful out there, you know? And, you know, like I say, I get some, some of the researchers that, that kind of get upset, you know, and they always say, oh, she don't know what she's talking about. You know, hey, that's okay. I'm just, you know, be careful out there. It doesn't, matter how famous or how rich you are, those two things are not going to save you if this thing's going to attack you. you got to be careful. Um, 
always be alert. Watch out for your surroundings, you know, and, and you should never be alone. You know, I, I share that with a lot of people around. Um, people come and ask me sometimes. I get some that stop by my home. Hey, this thing is doing this. What, what do I got to do to stop it? Why is it doing this? Well, you know, I'll sit and talk and I'll, sometimes I'll go to their home and I'll kind of look, take a look around to see what could be um, causing it to come to their home. Could uh, it could be one thing that could be it that I see is they're leaving livestock food out, cat food, dog food, get that stuff put up. You know, they're, they're coming and eating that. That's why they're coming around. Um, like even like, uh, let's see, like right now. Okay. There's no like harvest food, no corn, melons, nothing to take from the gardens now because they're still growing. So right now they're hungry. So now they're kind of coming out into some people's pots and, you know, they'll, uh, why is it coming around? Well, for one thing, they're hungry. They got little ones, young ones, juveniles that are hungry. So now they're going to come and start taking your small animals, which is what's going on in some areas out here. And um, you you know, just got to be really careful. You know, if it's, uh, as a matter of fact, we've had, Earlier in the year, it was in March, March, and then in um, May, we had this thing come run across on our property, hit the east side of our house. It was so loud, and my daughter was uh, sleeping in the living room. She's like, Mom, did you hear that? I'm like, yeah, I heard it. Oh, the dogs went crazy. I mean, I mean, this thing really hit the side of the house, and it was loud, you know, it really kind of spooked her, you know. Now, we get, I get reports of that like that, but um, as far as attacking people around here, I haven't uh, heard anything uh, down in our area. But back east, I, I have gotten several reports of it attacking uh, some people. With reports like that, uh, you know, somebody getting their arm ripped off, there's... Mm-hmm. I mean, people are going to hear about that. Oh, yeah. Do you think the military steps in and tries to get things to quiet down? Or what do you think happens in those scenarios? I, I would think so, because um, I had um, heard that when something like that had happened, you know, like I said, some back east, um, within the probably maybe a couple hours or so when the report went out and all, all of a sudden military shows up. And so I'm sure they're scouting the area and all, and did they shoot it and got, get rid of it? I have no idea. Um, as far as I know is that after they went in several hours, a couple of days later, all of a sudden everything was just quiet. It's like this thing was gone. Who knows? They, they might have shot it and took it off, hauled it out, you know? Who knows? Have you heard reports of a government presence uh, coming into the reservation for things like that? Oh, yeah. I've heard um, in, um, it was in Arizona several years ago, supposedly a guy had one, shot one, and was hauling it off. Why the guy shot it, I have no idea. Uh, He was hauling it off, and he got a hold of, Somebody, or he announced it or something, um, I don't know how that kind of went out, but they said within about 20 minutes, military caught up with him and hauled the body off. And wherever he killed it, they said they swept that place, made sure they, all that blood was um, was cleaned up and all. Wow. Um, that happened there. And then there was another one in uh, Arizona again, Pretty much the same thing. They said that they had seen um, some guys in a, a, a black, um, a white van and a black van where uh, someone had, um, I think it was shot, uh, shot one. And um, they caught up with the individual. All the, uh, the guy took pictures. It was a guy. Took pictures and all, and they took his phone away. Uh, erased all the pictures and told them that you never seen it, it never happened. They told him to get out of here. Um, same thing, you know. They said that 
within about 20 minutes, military was there and they hauled it right off. Um, there was another incident, as a matter of fact, over here, um, below, below, uh, below Harper Valley, there's a, on the, so it'll be on the north side of the river, because we're on the south side of the river, uh, several years ago, um, so there's like the, the, the river, Animus River, San Juan River runs right along on the north and south side. It's kind of like pretty much the river pretty much almost just divides us, right? So I could swim across to the north side and I'll be on the like state side. Okay. Mm-hmm. So on the state side, right where the river runs along to the east, east north, there was um, some boulders that came down that were that just, um, I guess, uh, probably due to the rains and all that, it, it, you know, it rolled off the cliff. Well, there was a lady that was home that lives up on the on the south side of the river, and her kitchen window faces the north. So she seen something that was climbing up, something black, big and black, that was climbing up the boulders. Pretty soon, um, she's just watching this thing climbing up, and she... Um, so it got so far, I guess, up, and then all of a sudden that boulder got loose and it fell with it, it which happened to be Bigfoot, and it crushed him. So when that had happened, uh, a lot, now the ditch canal runs right in that same area. So they had all these boulders and more rocks that came down. So a pl- it blocked the ditch canal so people couldn't get water, you know, to, to the farm, farms and all. Well, it, it really, uh, there's a lot of rocks and big boulders there. Well, they called, um, like, hey, you know, we need to get this cleaned up. So they called uh, uh, some guys to, uh, I don't know if it was the city of Farmington or uh, I'm not sure if it was maybe the fire department or I forget who it was. But anyway, the people... A booth from the farming area came down to look to see what had happened. And, and so they were kind of walking around and stuff, walking around to see where, how they could get some um, equipment down there to, you know, move all these big boulders and all. And um, they're walking around and stuff, and they noticed blood. And one of the guys, when he come around the big boulder, he sees all this blood, and he sees a hand that was just laying out. And they said the color of, he said the color of the hand was like gray, the palm, you know, underneath your hand. Uh-huh. Um, kind of like the color of a monkey's hand. It had fingers and you could see the hair on it. And that, that really freaked the guy out. And they're like, oh my God, someone, you know, they're thinking it was a human, you know, someone got crushed by the boulder. So they got some, um, big equipment out there right away. And they started moving those boulders uh, as fast as they could, I guess, from what I understood. And that when they came uh, to that uh, final big boulder, when they removed it, and they they couldn't believe what what they were looking at, they were like, "Oh my God!" So someone had called. I believe it was uh, sheriff was down there, and I think state police was down there. And um, when they saw that. One of them called, uh, I believe it was the government. They said that they were there within about 15 minutes. And um, they loaded up the body because they knew what it was. And it was a big foot, they said. And, uh, but of course, you're not going to get that put on the news or newspaper, you know. Right. And so they, um, a guys in a, in a black van, they uh, hauled the body out of there. So it was pretty big from what I heard. And how I found out about this is my husband used to be with the volunteer um, a fire department out here in the, the uh, Kirtland area. And some of the guys were down there in that area and they were uh, watching, you know, what was going on. And so, and so they, they, there was one guy that did see it and he was talking to my husband, telling him about it. And then, because, yeah, that thing got crushed, and, and they said it was black. Um, it was pretty big, and 
He said, boy, those guys, those government people were there within no time, and they cleaned that thing up. I mean, they, I mean, they just swabbed every blood that they could find. They said that they just cleaned that like it was never there. And they hauled the body out of there. Why do you think they covered up? You know, I, I, I don't know. I, I always ask that question. Why, why do you cover it? Why do you not let the people know? At least they could be aware of these things are down here. You know, not only here, but everywhere else, you know. Mm -hmm. what, what's the big secret? Everybody's seen something. Everybody's hearing something. Everybody's, you know, saying that this thing's doing this and that. And they're saying, no, it's not a big one. Well, then you tell me what this is. This is what I described to you. This is big, black, hairy, and it's about seven foot tall. Um, I get reports of some that are 10 foot tall. I'm like, oh, yeah, those are huge. You know, I'm like, okay, well, well then you guys are saying that it's not it. Then, well, what is it? It's, it's, it ain't no gorilla and it ain't no bear. We don't get bears down here, you know. And, you know, I, I did ask... Um, one of the uh, game and fish person and I said I asked them I said well what do we do if this thing comes around and, and it attacks us if I shoot it are you guys going to throw me in jail I'm like do you guys need to do something and this individual just well we can't help you because my boss said that um, you guys believe in Bigfoot and we can't investigate or, or we can't do anything about it i said so you're telling me that if this thing hurts someone down our way we're on our own and you guys are not going to come and help us well that that's what my boss said that we gotta we just have to stay away from this area because you guys believe in bigfoot i'm like oh, okay i said so if someone dies this thing attacks us and someone dies, I said, I'm coming after you guys. I said, I'm going to see you guys. He said, we're crying out for help. People out here are asking for help. But because of your boss, you guys are not going to do anything. No, you guys are on your own. That's what we got told uh, wow. back in 2009. I'm like, okay. Well, well, what do I said, well, don't be throwing me in jail if I shoot this thing and it, and it dies. There's areas... Um like, for instance, where you live, uh, I've known about different communities uh, here in Oklahoma where Bigfoot is not an unknown thing. It's like you're saying everybody's seen something or they have a cousin that saw one. But places like where you're at, a lot of the times people are coming to you seeking help. These things are coming up to their homes, right? Oh, yeah. I've gotten reports of where, it, like I said, they're looking in the window. Uh, they're hitting the side of the house. Why are they hitting the side of the house? It could be that, hey, um, I'm around here telling us. Or they want to figure out what part of the house you're at or to see if someone's home. And then I get other reports of it actually walking into people's home. I was going to ask you if you've heard of that. Yeah. That there was two, I believe there was two, well, probably more than two incidents that happened uh, out there in the uh, Crown Point area. And uh, a gentleman uh, uh, contacted me and was telling me that his uncle and his wife were at home watching TV and this thing came walking in and and um, why it walked in, I don't know, but it they all come they, you know, they all got scared. They're like, What's God? And I guess they, the the guy or the, the wife yelled at it and like, get out, you know. Kind of like shush it out. Yeah. And I guess it just kinda of stood there and looked at them, then it turned around and ran out, you know, ran out the door. And I believe there was another one that happened the same, pretty much the same way. This thing came walking in. This one, though, walked in and seen that this individual in the house and ran back out real quick. This is from uh, what I gather. It's what the, uh, the report that I, I got. That happened uh, about, uh, not last year, but the year before. 
uh, it was before the pandemic. So, but yeah, they've had some, I've had some reports of it walking into the home, uh, looking into the windows, hitting the sides of the house. Um, it's on that, uh, just kind of like walking, uh, in the fields and then walking back into the tree lines. Um, I've gotten some other reports of it yelling down at the river. Um, they're saying this. Pretty, they're pretty sure it's a male, a female, and a young one, uh, a, ju- a juvenile one. You know, last year when they had out there in the Shiprock and Hogback area, you know how they had that hemp thing that it really yeah. kind of blew up last year about yeah. that? Oh, but they had a bunch of Asian people uh, hanging around uh, the farms and and uh, there's just one one uh, family that um, yeah, contacted me that was telling me that, uh, hey, those um, guys were down at the river uh, towards the evening time. And they said, you could just hear them screaming, get out of here, you know. And I guess they, they ran right smack into one of them down there at the river. Oh, wow. And I guess they were washing up down at the river, and on their way down to the river, they uh, they went and walked up right up on one, and they said they got scared and ran back, ran back to the um, to the field uh, where they were working at, where they were staying at. Uh, they 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 couldn't believe what they had seen. They said they really got scared, and they're like, um, I forget. Um, there's a um, this there was a a name, I think so the name they gave it or something. Uh, um, like for them, it's kind of like Yeti, I guess. Mm-hmm. But um, to them, it's like um, like a, 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 um, the Native people, a lot of them like, okay, the Navajo PD or maybe even some of the uh, forest rangers won't even go look into the Bigfoot stuff because they believe it's a taboo. You know, so... It was like the same way with these Asian people. Um, they were saying Yetis down there. And they, they, they were doing some kind of, um, oh, I'm trying to remember. She was telling me that, you know, being that they ran up right, you know, to one. When they got back to the camp, they got word that they, they were doing some kind of, um, some kind of prayer chant or some kind of uh ceremony for i mean like you know among the asian people that they do when they see something like that because they don't they don't mess with that they they you know that that's like something really bad to them too as well and so um, after that had happened last year they said that they never went back down to that river do the navajo consider it a spiritual being Uh, some do yes what's your opinion on it uh do you think they are just uh, animal like everything else or do you think that they might have some abilities that we can't explain i believe they have some abilities that we cannot explain um there's some evil presence to them that's the that's that's my own opinion mm-hmm. and uh, i know i'll get bashed for it but that's okay you know i've um when I'm out doing some um, research or, or investigations, there's a particular area that I've gone into that I just, it feels really bad, like a very bad presence there that when I get that way, I'm like, okay, this is not, not a good, this is not, I don't feel right. It's, it, I don't feel safe. Now, when I feel like that, and then I'm like, okay, we, I need to get out. I'll leave because I, I, I don't want to stay to see what's going to happen. Yeah, I, I believe there's a there's a, a really bad evil presence um, that's among among them that's got some kind of evil spirit among them. You know, people see orbs with you know when they're around they see when a UFO's around it seems like a Bigfoot's around then they start seeing these little balls of lights. All of a sudden, appear and, and Bigfoot's around. Uh, some of the things that they can do, they could. It's like they could run so fast, but you know, they might not even be running. They say they. I've had a report not too long ago. Ladies like this thing runs. She goes, I've never seen anything run so fast like that across the field. 
I said, you know, it may not have been running. It might have been floating. And she goes, you know what? You could be. And she goes, this thing was big and black, had long arms. And this thing was just moving so fast. She goes, what the hell is this thing? <laughs> you know, I mean, it did. It really kind of spooked her and her husband, too. Have you ever seen the lights that people talk about? Uh, I've seen, what I've seen is orbs, and some of the lights is kind of like a a blue, a blue to greenish fluorescent color light. Sometimes it's like a, a white, uh, off white color light, kind of bright. Uh, you know, I've, I've seen different color of lights after I hear a book, uh, hear a Bigfoot yell, or if I hear it something heavy running, you know, which I'm pretty sure it's a Bigfoot. And, yeah, I, I see the, the orbs. I see a lot of orbs when Bigfoot's around. Uh, lately, I've been getting a lot of uh, reports of that. And they're like, what, why is that, you know? And it kind of freaks out some people. Like, I've never seen lights like that, you know. It's really hard to explain. It really is, you know, if you, especially when you see it's not only just one light. There's usually several other lights around. You know, people kind of watch it and they're like, whoa. And then all of a sudden it just disappears. Whenever I asked you this question, you mentioned uh, getting a negative response from people for uh, voicing your opinion, which is something that Bigfoot researchers have dealt with in the past. There's definitely a line drawn in the sand between the paranormal side and the flesh and blood side. Mm -hmm. However, I have noticed more people openly talking about orbs and Mm -hmm. it kind of becoming more of an accepted phenomenon that takes place around Bigfoot sighting. Mm -hmm. Do you think there will be a time whenever everybody can kind of start listening (laughs) instead of bashing? Or do you think, those division lines will just stay like they are. No, I I think they're going to start kind of be a little bit more open to this. Um, it may take some time. You know, it it's going to. They're just going to have to see it for themselves. That's the only way that they'll be like, okay, now I know what they're talking about. You know, we could I could sit here and talk to them and tell them, hey, this is what I've seen. I've got pictures of it. Explain this to me then. Why are these orbs around when Bigfoot's around? Why is a UFO around when Bigfoot's around? Why is it? I mean, you guys are saying that, no, 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 these are two separate things. I don't think so. So you think that UFOs and Bigfoot are definitely connected then? I think everything is connected. Everything. Not just UFOs, but you got you got gargoyles, you got mothman, you got lizard men, you got the little people, you got uh, you got Bigfoot, of course, and then you got uh, what else is there? The um, uh, half man, half horse. I mean, you got all, all of these different creatures running around, you know, all over the place. They they all got to be connected. They have. Uh, I mean, that's just my opinion. You know, everybody's going to be like, whoa, 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 wait a minute here. No. Do your research. Read it. Find out. Okay, you can have, okay, we've got Bigfoot over here running around in our area. I've gotten reports of a gargoyle. I've gotten reports of a half man, half horse. I've got reports of the little people, not only that, crazy old skinwalkers. And we've got, uh, what else? There was something huge. I don't know what this is, but even my husband um, heard something fly right above him. The wingspan was, I mean, wide. And the color of it, he says that the skin color looked like the color of of an elephant, grayish color. Had that kind of texture. It was right above him. This was at night. Um... Not only did he hear it, he, when he looked up, there's this thing flying up above the wingspan, like I said, was very wide. And that really scared him. He didn't know what, and I didn't know what that was either. It was at night. 
he had just stepped out the back door and he heard something flapping and he looked up and and there's this thing. He's like, what the hell is this? You know, here he went back in. Um, what that was, I have no idea. Um, I mean, we got reports of all kinds of other things, you know, like, what the hell are these things coming from? Well, what's up? And it seems like every time they come in, they're always running back down towards the river. What is it about that river? Everything, the reports that have gone, I have received. Yeah, I saw this over here, and it went straight back down to San Juan River. What is, you know, I, what is it about that river that these things run back to the river? I have no idea. Is there, there's something down there, you know, uh, along the river somewhere that these things are, are coming up from? You know, I've. I've um, heard a um, long time ago that, um, that there is a cave underneath this river where I have no idea. Is that where these things are coming up from? Could be. That's why everything runs back to the river every time. It's around. My, my son, my oldest son, several years ago, at the time we were, we were still working on this house that we're in now, and we used to stay in a little small RV trailer. And at that time, we had um, um, no running water in the house. And we were in the house. And, uh, you know, we had just moved into the house. But we didn't have water in here. So we had to run into the, the little trailer there to go take care of business and get cleaned up there. Well, it was about 1, I think about 1 o'clock at night. He couldn't sleep. No, it was at 2. He couldn't sleep. So he went to, to the bathroom. And he, when he was walking back, he heard something hit the tractor, like a, uh, something like cling or, you know, like something, I don't know, hit, hit the tractor. And he turned and he looked that way. And what he had seen, he, it really scared, kind of scared and startled him. And he said that thing was big. He come running in. He, um, he said when he stopped, they both made eye contact to each other. And he said what he had seen was a half man, half horse standing right by the tractor. When he, they both made eye contact, he got scared and he turned to walk and he kept watching it at the same time as he was walking, you know, towards the house, back to the house. This thing, he said, this thing turned and he said it jumped over the fence and ran back down towards the river. Wow. He come running in and he, uh, mom, mom, get up, get up. It, you got to come out, you know? And I'm like, what, what's going on? Just, just grab the camera and come here, you know? And I'm like, okay. So I went out there and, um, the footprints that we found and this thing was walking, like I said, is half man, half horse. So he's got hooves. The hooves on this thing was huge and it jumped over, over the fence. And he said when he heard it jump over the fence, you could hear how it hit the ground, like boom. And you could hear, he says, I could hear it like boom, 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 running back down towards the river. And I was like, oh, my word, you know, that, uh, that those um, hoof prints were huge. I couldn't believe it. Was it like a, like a centaur with the yeah. upper torso of a man? Yes. Um, that is not the only thing time you know that's the first time my son had seen one you know that that really scared him and uh i was just like wow where where are they coming from you know i'm like it, it's always going back towards the river and yeah. everything like i said the reports of different creatures that i've been getting i would ask him which way did it run it ran towards the river and it was always towards the river have you heard of any reports of like dogman creatures? Uh, yes, up towards um, on top of the hill here, uh, there's a little uh, place they call Ojo Amarillo, just right up up here on top of the hill, on the south side of us. There's some nappy fields up there, agriculture fields up there where they uh, uh, grow like corn and um, hay and different. Um, um, stuff up that way. There's uh, an intersection up that way that uh, 
this couple of the workers were heading to work towards the evening time. And they said this thing ran out in front of them. It is is a huge, what they call it, a, a dogman. They said this thing is huge, very big. And it uh, ran out in front of them, kind of like stopped and looked at them. And then it took off across the road and, and kept on going, I guess. Uh, it, it has scared uh, quite a few of the, the workers there several years ago. Do you think these dogman creatures are something like a Bigfoot, or do you think these are like traditional shapeshifters? Oh, uh, I would say not, not a Bigfoot. Um, I would, I'm kind of leaning towards the uh, shapeshifters. Um, I could be wrong, but it, I mean, to me, I think that that's some of that, uh, the shapeshifting thing going on there. But like I said, too, I could be wrong in that. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't think it's a big, not a, not a big one. No. no. Do you think the pace of these creatures being seen is like picking up just across the board? Yes, and I believe it's going to get worse. I think we're going to see more things coming out that uh, we're going to be like, what the blank is that? Now? <laughs> you know, yeah. I think it's going to get worse, and the the um, the sightings is going to be a lot more. And so everybody better hang on out there and be careful. Um, that's what I feel, and that's what um, I think is going to. I mean, it's already happening right now. I mean, it seems like the sightings have have really kind of um, skyrocketed in some areas. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're living in a time where the you know the six o'clock news is talking about UFOs. Mm-hmm. You know, that's something that I never thought would happen. I know, right? Now, you hold a uh, conference down there most of the time. I think the pandemic kind of put a hiccup in that. Do you plan on bringing the conference back this year? Um, I really wanted to do it this year, really did. But the area that I wanted to do the conference in uh, was going to be out there in Dulce. Again, we had a, a big foot at expedition that we had uh held last year and it was it was a good turnout we had a lot of activity going on and that's where i wanted to do it again this year but um that's not going to happen because the apache tribe canceled all their activity for again for this year again so and then here on the reservation uh where i met uh, there's only certain things that, you know, so many that we can do. They still kind of feel that it's not quite safe to have a big old, you know, gathering. They, mm-hmm. they you know, telling the people to, hey, you know, just still be careful. But, you know, I mean, we probably could, but to be on the safe side, I think I'm, I'm going to hold off until next year to do the um, conference unless something changes and that if I can pull it off uh, maybe this September, I will let you guys know as soon as possible. Yeah. But for right now, I think everybody's still kind of, I mean, down our our area, uh, in the areas that I want to have, and then everybody's kind of still a little, like, eerie mm-hmm. of big, you know, big gatherings. And so, and I noticed that some people, some of the other uh, conferences are going on back east, you know, which is really cool. I'm really glad and happy to see that, but it's a little different with the the the, the tribes, you know, the the Navajo tribe and the Apache tribe. You know, they're just being careful, and I totally understand that. Yeah, and um, it, it's better to be safe than sorry, you know. And I, you know, I don't want to have one. Then everybody gets sick, and then I'm going to be held responsible. You know, I don't, I don't want, I don't want that. You know, yeah. And that, that that's a lot to take in. You know, if something happens and you get sick, and um, you know, I, I don't want that for the people. I, want, I just want them to be safe. Make sure it's safe for everybody to get together. You know, and have a good time again. But as far as right now, um. Uh, it probably won't happen till next year, just the way things look. So, but if, you know, like I said, there's that possibility if that window's open, then I'm, I'm going to jump on it right away. Did you notice any uh, change in 
the frequency of signs and stuff during the pandemic? Uh, it, to me, it was, seemed like the same, but it was it was a little bit quiet there for a little while. But you know, it it was still around. It was still making its round. But it, and it was kind of odd though too. It was a little bit quieter, and then all of a sudden this year, um, yeah, we're getting. It seems like a little bit more activity this year than uh, last year during because uh, last year was in that pandemic. That was kind of strange. If you ask me. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned the, you know, the smaller animals being taken or whatever. Is that primarily what's been going on this year for you? Uh, yeah. In some areas, yes. They're like, oh, my cats have been missing. My small dogs are, you know, like chickens or rabbits, you know. Um, those are coming up missing. And, and like I said, they're hungry. And so... They're, they're, they're going to come and take what they can. You know, if they see it, they're going to come and get it. You were talking about your first experience with them. You're a researcher, so you hear reports from all over. But where you're at mm -hmm. specifically, do you have a lot of reports of them looking in, like, children's windows and stuff? Uh, not necessarily just the children's uh, window. is, you know, where it, it seemed like... Um, the families that are home and they're watching TV. So there could be a light on. And it seems like it's always like in the living room area or the kitchen area. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes in the bedroom. Uh, uh, but yeah, I, I, I get reports of that quite a bit. Yeah, this thing's looking in my window. It's got red eyes. And and they'll be like, what the heck is that? And they'll look again and they'll get it moving. This thing will take off. Now, there was a report that, uh, as a matter of fact, my my uh, um, sister-in-law, my husband's family, they live up um, uh, probably about, what, three miles, probably three, four miles from us to the east. Um, this was probably, I'm sure this is real quick, back in 2000, I think it was 11, um, well, this thing, they were home, this family's home, and these guys were watching TV, they were all watching TV, and all, all of a sudden, they see something looking in the window, and they're like, what the hell is that? It's, it's looking in the window, it's like, it's looking right at us, and they said the, the color of the eyes, they look, to them, it's red. They're like, what the blank is that? So, the guy gets up, and they notice that thing moved away. And they're like, oh, maybe, it's, you know, nothing. And just start watching TV again. And they say, again, that thing, and, he says, and it's pretty tall. They said, that thing is tall. What is that? So the guys, they hear him ran out the door, and they could hear the dogs, real neighbor's dogs going crazy. And they said that this thing took off running again back towards the river. And they said this guy, these two guys, weren't chasing it because they wanted to, they thought maybe it was a skinwalker or something. And they're like, what the blank is that? They was running this, said, this thing was about halfway down the field. It stopped in the middle of the field, they said. And they watched this thing. They said it stopped, oh, like spread its arms up, you know, side by side, up, spread it, you know, open, like just like, I don't know how, uh, they said it just, put his arms up. Next thing they knew, they said this thing flew back to the river. And they're like, what the blank, blank is that? They said, boy, these two guys got so scared. They ran back into the house and they like, I don't know what that was, but that thing ran so fast, stopped in the middle of the field, like put his arms out, both arms up, and this thing flew back to the river. They're like, what the heck, you know? And you hear so many reports of footprints disappearing in the middle of a field. Yep. Or, you know, on a sandbar or something. Yeah. But, you know, some of the, the family out here, when they tell me that they, they say, yeah, we, we found footprints, but then all of a sudden it stops, you know? So when, when something like that, I get a report like that and I'll go and look. And then I'll look at the uh, the ground. Is okay? Do I is it is it all sand? Is it all rocky? Is it um, 
Is there like weeds or like uh, shrubs or something? Now, this is what I, I tell some of the people when I check out their areas, their, their property there. Um, I'll say, okay, where did the, the print stop? They'll take me, show me. And then I'll tell them, okay, uh, this is one thing that I see that, you know, you got to look on the ground. Okay, now this thing could, did, did, did it, they're saying that, it, did it just disappear? Did it go on all fours? Um, did it boil back down to the ground? Did it like, or did it just fly off or did it just disappear? Okay, let's, let's look more at the vegetation there. Let's look at the ground. What's on the ground? Is it, is there like bushes on the ground? So those are the things that I look at as, okay, I'll start walking and kind of looking. And, so, and a lot of the times I find little shrubs, little um, bushes that these things literally step on. They'll, they'll go drop down on all fours and they'll start walking. And they'll be walking on these shrubs. And I can see their, their foot, in their imprints on these little bushes. Okay, they're, it's almost like they're crawling off. I can see some uh, knuckle prints on these shrubs or on the ground. And I'll show the, the people, okay, you guys said that, um, you know, the footprint stops here. We don't know what happened to it. Then I'll point some of these things out. I said, okay, you see that shrub? Now look at this one over here. It's nice and, and kind of like it's never been disturbed. Now look at this one. This one was matted down. Something pushed push it down. So it kind of like flattened this bush down. So that tells me that this thing dropped on all fours and went crawling back maybe to the thicker brushes and then probably stood back up into the tree lines and walked off. It was like hopping shrub to shrub. There you go. So you can find their footprints. And so, you know, I that's what I tell the people. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying, but then there's times that I have literally come uh, across or, or uh, gotten a report where a footprint just stops and everywhere is smooth. I mean, just dirt, no, no footprints around. Okay, now that's where it gets really interesting. Like, okay, where did it go? You know, it's kind of like, yikes. Uh did it just disappear? I don't know. Where did it go? Because there, there are, is absolutely no footprints that trail off either directions. So I'm like, wow, this this is kind of spooky. You know, this is scary right here. You know, okay, where where did it go? And that's when you start. You know, like your mind starts working like, oh, my God, where, where is it? Did it really disappear? Okay, so if it disappeared, then what the heck are these things? I mean, if it can do that, then what is this? What what really is this thing? You know, um, they say they got so much strength. It could, it could run this fast. You know, it could do certain things that, us humans can't do that we don't have the strength to do where do they get their strength from you know all this stuff starts playing into your mind you know it just boils back down to really what are these things <laughs> you know i mean definitely the more we look into it uh the questions outweigh the knowledge that's that's so true brenda thanks for coming on yes. and sharing your stories and your knowledge and your experiences you're welcome. Thank you. Always a fascinating conversation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I will definitely have you back on in the future. And it, whenever you get information about your next uh, conference or whatever you're putting on, let me know and I will help spread the word for sure. I sure will. I definitely will. Thank you so much for having me on. Oh, absolutely. It was awesome. And to everybody out there, as always, thanks for listening.
sure to check out my other podcast, Planet Fear, where myself and Lauren Smith talk about all the fearful and frightening things out there, from encounters with the paranormal to stories of true crime. Go to planetfearpodcast.com for new episodes and links to all the places you can find us.